the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas. The State Chamber AIA is the leading voice for business at the state capitol and serves as the primary business advocate on all issues affecting Arkansas employers. Our mission is to promote a pro-business, free enterprise agenda and prevent anti-business legislation, regulations, and rules. Now more than ever, business matters. Learn more at ArkansasStateChamber.com. All right, joining me now to talk business is Michael Tilley with our content partner, The City Wire. First question, Michael, let's begin with some home sales. A very robust August. We saw some, gosh, 20% gains across some of the major markets, uh, up 12.4% 12, 12 for the year, year to date. What's driving all this activity? Well, it's just, I mean, if you're looking for, um, if you're looking, again, as we've said, if you're looking for some good economic news in Arkansas, the home sales market is it. Uh, I think we just have to mark it up to a couple of factors. One, we've had uh, low interest rates. That doesn't hurt. Uh, and the market's just recovering. You know, it's been since 2007, 2008 when we had the bubble, and it's just slowly picking back up. I still think we have a lot of investors in the market. I still think home prices, land prices are still at a low enough value, comparatively speaking, that uh, investors are still in the market. But yes, all four metro areas uh, that we uh, we look at with the uh, the City Wires Arkansas Home Sales Report, all four metro areas are up, we're up, as you said, over 20% in August, and they're up uh, close to that for the year to date. So, you know, there was some concern that in the back half of the year that maybe the home sales would start to slow down, uh, maybe interest rates would rise, uh, but so far that's, that hasn't happened. And um, and it'll be interesting to see what the federal, um, the budget problems, federal shutdown, if that will have any impact on, on the remaining months in the year. Yeah, you got to think that it might just from a consumer confidence perspective, this thing continues to prolong. And of course, we're entering into the debt ceiling de uh, uh, debate as well. Let's talk about something else that you and I have been following for a couple of months here. Uh, Walmart has been making an effort to help bring manufacturers back from overseas to Arkansas. Lots of hints that something might be in the works in the in the near future. And we learned this week, early this part of this last week, that uh, a Walmart supplier, a toy maker out of uh, northwest Arkansas, is going to add about 74, 75 new jobs. Tell us a little bit about Redman. Right, Redman, they'll start out with about 17, 15, 17 jobs. And then as they slowly ramp up their business and, and bring more production. But it's a toy company, as you said. They make bodies for some of the uh, battery-powered vehicles, cars. Uh, and it's the first of two announcements that we expect. Um, Governor Beebe's office and, and Grant Tennille with the Arkansas Economic Development Commission have said there's another one that's close to signing. Uh, but Redman was the first Arkansas victory in, this, in, in Walmart's onshoring effort, their effort to buy another $50 billion uh, in, in manufactured goods from U.S. manufactured goods, I should say, over the next 10 years. And, um, you know, and Walmart probably wanted a victory, wanted a victory in their, uh, in their hometown. But this stems from, you know, the, the August uh, manufacturing summit they had in Orlando. Some of these initial conversations began then. And, in fact, uh, um, I think with Redman, it may have even been before that. But, um, you know, again, as we've talked, Manufacturing in the U.S. has lost 7 to 12 million jobs over the last decade or so, and I don't think we're going to get those back. You know, the manufacturing, we don't see manufacturing operations with the, the hundreds. We see those with the, you know, with the advanced manufacturing with more equipment rather than labor. Uh, but at least to, to, to stop the loss of manufacturing jobs and return some of those back to the U.S. will be a big help, and especially in Arkansas where we're well off uh, the manufacturing numbers uh, over the past uh, 20, 30 years. And as you and I have discussed, this is that that is a trend that some of our sister states are not necessarily experiencing. They have seen some manufacturing job gains, whereas Arkansas and Mississippi still lag a little bit in that department. Let's talk too about another Walmart story here this yep. past week. Uh, Walmart exiting its partnership with Bartai in Enterprises in India. Is this kind of a surprise? I think the hint has been there for a while, but what is this, what's the larger context, the larger story about this? Well, the first thing I should say is Walmart has been sensitive about, they're not exiting India, they're just, they're, they're dissolving that partnership and they're gonna stay, they're gonna stay with their wholesale cash and carry business. Um, I, I think one of the takeaways that we're looking at is just that um, it, it's a, it's a, different culture. I mean, India is a different culture. You know, Walmart's doing, so far, is doing well with their mass mart uh, operation. Um, it's just 
relatively beginning in South Africa. They've done relatively well in China, although they struggled there. They've done well with ASDA in the UK, but this the the India market is different, and they're also under some investigation. You know, their CEO re resigned, retired suddenly, or I should say resigned suddenly back in June, uh, and he's been with them since 2007, the, the, the India CEO. Um, and so there's some uh, allegations of um, improper uh, behavior uh, that Walmart faces there, as they do in Mexico and some other countries. Um, but um, as you said, it was hinted, it was hinted that there'd be a change. Uh, I was frankly surprised that it would be a complete split split with uh, their partner, their joint venture partner there, but it, uh, the interesting thing is they're going to stay and they're going to try to push that wholesale cash and carry business forward. I think it's just going to be a smaller market and it's, and it's probably going to take Walmart uh, a longer period of time to get up and run into the levels that they thought they were going to uh, see by this time. There have been some other hints too in uh, out of Walmart world up there in terms of potential changes in leadership. Uh, you and Kim Souza with the City Wire have written uh, substantially about this. Kind of where does that um, rumor mill slash pretty good authority kind of stand right now in terms of what we might see in terms of leadership at Walmart? Well, we're, we're continuing to hear that, that Walmart is uh, in the process of changing leadership, evalu evaluating leadership. As, we, as I said earlier, the, uh, sub, um, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, that they're, the investigation that's ongoing that Walmart spent a lot of money on um, in Mexico and China and looking at Brazil and India, you know, that could drive some of this. Um, but uh, Mike Duke, Walmart CEO Mike Duke, it's just we, we're getting a lot of rumors that um, he is, he's going to cycle out and they'll bring either Bill Simon, who's the Walmart, CEO, Walmart U U.S. CEO, or Doug McMillan, who's the international CEO, in to run that organization. Uh, and what we're hearing from our sources is that uh, Mr. McMillan is the favorite choice, but I've been covering Walmart long enough to know that, that anything can happen, but I'm still convinced that within the next uh, three to six months, we'll, um, we'll see some kind of leadership shift at the world's largest retailer. All right, we got you predicted on that now. I got something to hold your feet to the fire on. Now, <laughs> last question for you. We've got about 60 seconds left Great. here. We've been looking at how the uh, federal government shutdown has been impacting the state. We've seen in the private sector, you reported earlier this week uh, in conjunction with us about DeSoe Falcon, uh, potential for some layoffs there in the right. long run. You've also got uh, state government threatening to lose and furlough some workers as a result of the shutdown. Um, wh 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 how critical do you think we've gotten at this point? Do you think there still is time to hang on and survive, or do you think that there needs to be a quick resolution on this? Well, I mean, just not from Arkansas standpoint, but from the market standpoint, it'd be nice if they would resolve this quickly. Uh, another thing that's that's out there, there are 10,000 members, an estimated 10,000 members of the Arkansas Guard, Arkansas National Guard, that aren't training in October, and that's um, uh, there's a, almost a two mil, uh, excuse me, a three million dollar wage loss just for Arkansas, just from those 10,000 members not drilling. So that's three million out there that's not going to restaurants and hotels and shopping and that kind of thing. So that's a small aspect. And Wallet Hub recently conducted a survey of the 50 states and. They said that of the 50 states, Arkansas ranked 38th in the, in the uh, level of impact. So I guess the good news is we're on the low end finally, which is a good thing, so our impact is not as heavy. Uh, but when it comes to Social Security funding and the potential for a negative impact on Social Security funding, Arkansas ranked third in that Wallet Hub study. So uh, I think just for those who are on disability or senior citizens, uh, I think they're probably hoping this ends quickly. All right, he's Michael Tilley with our content partner in Fort Smith and Northwest Arkansas, the City Wire. As always, we appreciate you. Thanks, Michael.